I was really, really, really into DMX. Snitches wanna try, snitches wanna lie, the snitches wonder why. DMX. Oh man, man, what? Yeah, I like DMX. When, when DMX, yeah, when DMX died, I shed real tears. He died the day before my birthday. Wow. Man, wow. I shed real tears. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. I you, when you was young, who, you say you, you love rap music. What was the, who was the artist that you loved? Was it P and Nim or was it, who, what was the thing that you really listened to when you was coming up? That's a great question, bro. Uh, I love answering this. I was really, really, really into DMX. Snitches wanna try, snitches wanna lie, the snitches wonder why. DMX. Oh man, man, what? Yeah, I like when, DMX. when DMX, yeah, when DMX died, I shed real tears. He died the day before my birthday. Wow. Man, wow. I shed real tears, you know what I mean? Um, so I was really into DMX, I was really into Nas. How did, how did you, how did you, how did you learn about DMX? You just listening to the music, just hip hop head? Man, one of my middle school, <laughs> yeah, just listening to the music. That's how I found out about him. Of course, watching BET, MTV. But DMX's presence was so big when he got onto the scene that one of my uh, math teachers in middle school, white dude named Mr. Adams, this man came in class one day reciting DMX lyrics Which to song? us. Uh, what they really want? From nah, the 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 intro. He was reciting the the lyrics to an intro skit where DMX said, "Just cause I love my nigga. just cause I love my nigga, I shed blood for my nigga." Yeah, of course he wasn't saying the N word. You know what I mean? He wasn't dumb, but, but he, he was like, it. "Ah, shit!" Oh, he replaced the N word with students. That's what he did. <laughs> he said, "Just cause I love my students, I shed blood for my students. Let a student holler, where are my students? All I wanna hear is right here, my students, <laughs> bro." That's when I was like, "Oh, DMX is is on another level, bro." Than a lot of these other rappers, he got a suburban white dude in class, you know, rapping this to his students. So DMX. Nas, nice. uh, Juvenile. Juvenile. Oh, Lil Wayne. Oh, Lil Wayne was the youngest out of the clique, so it was easy coming up, you know, my generation, it was very easy to be like, yep, that's the one we like the most because he closest to our age. Mm -hmm. He the you youngest one. He got the sound effects when he rapping. Chick -a -pa, da -da 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 -da, you know what I mean? I felt that, so I really came up on them. Uh, uh, no Limit as well. I mean, No Limit, no Limit had so many artists that it was like, I just rock with the brand, you know, because man, it's hard to it, it's hard to even attach to just one or two people. I mean, of course, I loved Mac, I loved uh, uh, C Murder, I loved uh, Fiend. These are the albums I bought. I bought Barcelona, I bought Shell Shocked, I bought uh, The Last Dime with the hologram cover. You know, I bought these albums. So the New Orleans stuff, No Limit Cash Money, yes, but DMX and Nas, big yes to them. Wow, so. Oh, hey. oh, I gotta add one more in there. Who is that? Will Smith. Oh man, I used to rock with. Will be slapping people. I used to, <laughs> I used to rock with Will Smith, bro. Um, I used to rock with him. Oh, you say used to after he slapped Chris Rock, you quit rocking with him? Man, I mean, no, as a rapper, I used to rock okay. with him. After, yeah, after he slapped Chris Rock, I kind I didn't respect that move. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Cause I felt like that move was in an effort to impress his uh, his woman. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. And I ain't feel like that was. With a red Anytime it's dude. two brothers, that you, I don't really ride. Yeah, in, 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 in front public, of, yeah, in, in, public. in front of the world. Yeah, that's the not part. in front the barber shop. Yeah, in front of the, the world. world. You that, feel that's, me? That's 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 what made it kind of. If they'd have did it offset somewhere, I'd still be yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. They two dudes. Bro. Yeah, but so I ain't respect that. But when he when he uh when he put out like getting jiggy with it and that song, just the two of us dedicated to his the son. son yeah. Oh, bro. Like I used to could listen to rap, but my parents they had one um they had one catch. I had to listen to clean rap, so it yeah. had to be the edited version. So when I bought 400 Degrees, it was the edited version. Really? When I bought The Block Is High from Sharani at Peaches, yeah. it was the edited version. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I when I would listen to these albums, it was always the curse words bleeped out. Will Smith never cursed in his music. So I was like, oh, I could get, like, the real version of his album, <laughs> not the edited version. And that's, what influ that's part of what influenced me, because I was like, man, this man went platinum with no curse words. Yeah. Okay, I didn't even want to be a rapper back then, but when I did start rapping, one thing I always remember was like, yo, 
I don't want cursing my music. And that's aside from my religion and me being Christian and all that. Even outside of that, I love the fact that you could be a dude that's like, dang, this dude different but dope at the same time, you know? And I just, I was up for that challenge, so. That's the crazy part, because I, I like to say, I, I, I just know that you, you know, you you listened to so you had to have some type of influence as a, as a young. So how old was you when you when you really? I knew you. I, I heard you say you was in college when you when you started rapping. But mm -hmm. when when how old was you when you knew that you had a possibility? I, I want to rap. So I played basketball, mm -hmm. and I thought that was gonna be my ticket. You know, that was my first. Were you good? Yeah, I was. No, I was really good. I was like setting records at my school and everything. Yeah, I was, I, and I had the opportunity to play in college, but I wanted to play D1. You know, if you're familiar mm -hmm. with college mm -hmm. athletics, that's the dream right there. You're mm -hmm. trying to play at them big schools. I could have played D2 and D3. You know, I was on that type of level, but I tried to play D1, so I went to LSU, a D1 school, and I tried out for the team, tried to walk on, got cut, right? Whew. That Bru hurt, bruised my ego, you know, because I'm 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 used to being the man on campus. I'm averaging 20 a game in high school, you know, District 4A. Like people that's in the NBA right now, like DJ Augustine, people that's uh in the league right now and played and put up real numbers, real legends where I come from. Uh, Bo Lester McCaleb, you know, people like this. Uh, my man Milton, like I was balling with them. I was, I was holding my own against them, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my man Tweedy, Demond Carter, like I was holding my own with these people. So of course, when I got cut from my college team, that stuff didn't feel right. So that's when I get cut from the basketball team. Meanwhile, all my friends in college, they all picked up a new hobby. Once we, once we got to school, it's like everybody turned into a rapper. You know, everybody wanted to reinvent themselves and they all in the dorm room. They got their recording equipment and they having ciphers and they spitting and all this. So I was like, dang, everybody, all the black dudes in my school look like they into rapping. Let me try. You know, I, I just kind of got into it like that. Like, let me try. And you know, when you go around the circle and everybody rapping, everybody went home the night before and wrote something and now y'all all spitting it for each other. And when y'all all spitting it, you could kind of tell like, oh, he trash. Like, Oh, he better not ever rap again after this, you know. <laughs> he's straight. And then some people, you just like, mmm, he got that it factor. I had that it factor, and everybody knew it, you know, from the time I started rapping. I had the it factor. I just didn't have confidence at the time, you know. I had the it factor when it came to that pen, though, and those lyrics. So I, um, I started rapping, yeah, in college, bro. And it was just a little hobby at first, but... All in one year, my freshman year, I got cut from the basketball team. One of my best friends got murdered, like I was talking to y'all about. My girlfriend cheated on me with an LSU football player, you know. That stuff, that stuff, that was tough. And then, my roommate in college started selling dope, you heard me? All this stuff happened in a small amount of time. So when I started rapping, I had a lot built up on the inside that it was about. like man I, I i gotta talk about this stuff you know so for me therapy. real real quick it became therapy free therapy i and think I, yeah. I think you you know when you when you and i didn't mean to cut you off but when you bought it all in a nutshell and you put all those factors together i always think about the three days of dying i always talk about that you got to go through your you you call it you know issues but it's three days of dying meaning you had to go through that in order to transform you know did you get closer to god during that time that's when i found god okay or he found you but yeah. at the end of the day that's the three days you know when you start going through or losing your girl they, these doors start closing mm -hmm. and and these doors are closing for a reason that's god saying no mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like and basically getting you positioned to be honest with you mm -hmm. to make that decision to be yeah. honest so i think that's a beautiful thing because i went through my three days of dying and i i love it you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. i wouldn't be who i am today Day. I wouldn't even have this wife. You look back on it and now and you like, like best I, thing could have ever happened. Best thing that could have ever happened. I'm, th I'm like, man, it. I was in tears, man, when, when these things were happening yeah, to me. Yeah. And now I'm looking back like I would not be who I am without that stuff happening. That's so I'm real. thankful for it, you know? Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.